A recent Barna survey revealed in the past 15 years, the percentage of born-again Christians has fallen almost 10%. My next guest is a pastor who, for a time, worked at an auto dealership. His experiences makes him believe that both he and his church need to change their culture on winning the lost for Christ. Yeah, we're failing, including me. How do you, how do you set that scale? How do you set that benchmark? Where does that come from? <laughs> you, ask, the number, you take a percentage of the number of people in the pews and say, okay, we should do 10%? <laughs> no, no. As a matter of fact, our, our elders, and I, I love them, mm -hmm. there's the spiritual leaders of the church, the deacons are spiritual godly men as well, and we face this head on, Bob, and we simply acknowledged that where we are and where we've been for a while, mm -hmm. under my leadership, we have not succeeded in ways that are pleasing to God. Wow. And we said, what are we going to do? Uh, because we have nice buildings. Uh, I preach pretty good. The people love me. I love them. Money. We have enough money. We've got the nice equipment. And so I got up one Sunday and said something like this. When I worked in the dealership, we had wonderful buildings. We had all the equipment we needed and cars galore. And so at the end of the year, somebody said, how many cars did you sell? Yeah. Well, we didn't sell any cars, but our buildings are really nice <laughs> and the equipment is good yeah. and we love each other. And I said, that's kind of oh, where we honest. are. And so what are we going to do about it? Mm -hmm. Honesty is hard. It is very hard. It's very hard because the church family, though their intents are good, they allow it to go on mm -hmm. because, number one, it's, it's difficult to have a transformation in their own life. Right. And number two, to lead people to a place different than where they are is very threatening. And so our elders, in their discernment and wisdom, said, let's start in the simplest place possible. Let's begin to pray. I wish I could sit here, Bob, and tell you and our listening audience and those who are watching, uh, I, I am the poster boy for how this is done. <laughs> yeah. And the truth is, I failed miserably, but I'm no longer willing to continue to, to, to fail. Accept that. I want to accept that's it. That's got to be a starting point. It is. Is, is, there, is there practical application for, this, for, the, for the, uh, the people in the pews? Yes. To, to teach him how to evangelize? I mean, yes. you just take John 3.16 and hit somebody in the head with it? Or, nope. I mean, nope. has there been practical application that this is a good way to do this, to right. approach your neighbors or to, to, right. to become a friend? How do you, how do you teach that? Um, a good answer to that, Bob, is I have a wonderful prayer partner. And for Christmas two years ago, he gave me this book, Once I Was Lost. And it is, it is a short book, an easy read, but this is written uh, by two men who personally interviewed over 2,000 people who came to Christ, wow. and they asked them all the same question. What were the steps you went through in order to go from being lost and in darkness to being saved and in the light? And almost universally, they gave them five thresholds. Really? One, one threshold. How many people? Over 2,000. 2, and this book wow. is their stories and the thresholds. But, but tell me some of those steps. How, how, what, well, did they, what did they say? What are these, these yep. people who, they're, they're the recipients. They call them thresholds. They know what they're talking about. And there's five thresholds. The first is that when a person comes to Christ, and again, this is not every single person mm -hmm. in every circumstance, but this was their discovery right. and mine, largely, that a person coming into faith has to have a, a Christian friend that they trust. Not just a Christian friend, mm -hmm. but they trust. If they find a Christian friend who will walk life with them, then the second threshold is that they become curious. They say, why, why do you live your life that way? Why don't you get angry and swear? Why, why don't you talk about your wife the way Bob talks about mm -hmm. his wife at work? The, th the third is, that then after they've found someone to trust, they become curious, sometimes about that person's mm -hmm. life, but other times about why they're living their life the way they do. The third is that they begin to open up uh, to change, which That's is a, a new thought, yeah. which is a new thought for them. And then the fourth is they begin to seek after God in their own way with a little direction from their mm -hmm. friends. And then the fifth threshold is that they actually enter the kingdom by surrendering to the authority of Christ and becoming a Christ follower. So it's not necessarily the formula we, we, we've had in the Romans Road. Or the, it's, four spiritual it, laws. Yeah, four spiritual laws. It's, it's right. they, they've got to, first of all, they've got to find a Christian that they, they, do. Can, that they can trust. Yep. There's people out there that need to take that first step right now and become a friend to somebody and be trustworthy. One reason I believe, when I say this is the new thing, mm -hmm. it's not new at all. Yeah. That's what Jesus did. That's what his disciples did. That's what the early church did. But I can remember a day in pastoring when you would talk to an unbeliever about the gospel. 
there was something down inside of them. They went to church, their parents or grandmother went to church, and they would say, I know that's mm -hmm. absolute truth. I'm just not obeying it. But today, that is not the case. People, but they not only believe everything, they believe anything, mm -hmm. which we know. Well accepted. Yeah. And so for us yeah, as Christians, our job is to, to love them enough to give them mm -hmm. the most important thing we have, which is our heartbeats mm -hmm. and our life. And so the day of the four spiritual laws, I was part of Revival Ohio here in mm -hmm. Lima. I have nothing negative to say about any of that, but well, I'm there, convinced there fruit. Without, without this principle mm -hmm. of our people, Union Chapel, any person, any pastor saying, I'm not going to be satisfied with looking at my year end report and we had two people saved or no people saved and nobody baptized. Mm -hmm. We are no longer going to let that be the norm. We are, we are partners as the body of Christ. We are the evidence of this invisible God in the world. If you'd like more information about Jesus Christ or how to connect to a local church, go to our website or Facebook page. We have a lot more resources there that we can connect you with. Plus, I'd like to hear from you. Here's what's on the next Viewpoint.